Hi there and welcome to the channel. Today we are exploring binary trees in Haskell. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And feel free to leave a comment down below with anything that goes through your mind regarding Haskell and how I'm going about building this binary tree. So I have this outline. This is my to-do list that we'll, we will get through either in this video or over, or maybe I'll split this up. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's dive in into, you know, what a, what a binary tree is. So I have this, this ASCII looking art right here that kind of shows what a binary tree looks like. And essentially we, we, we have this connected structure where you know this connected structure is what we call a tree in computer science and for the binary tree we just have two branches right so this is a tree with a branching factor of at most two this is not the same as a binary search tree where there is uh ordering constraints on the the, the values that are at each node this is just a plain old binary tree where you can put any uh, information in here ordered however you want but the constraint is that it has a branching factor of two so we're gonna we're gonna work this the solution up from scratch and and talk about binary tree uh, it, in its structure and the functions that can operate on on a binary tree so the first thing I want to do is talk about how we create data types in, in Haskell, right? And to do that, we use the data keyword to say, you know, I want to create this type called a binary tree. And binary trees store some kind of value, right? So I'm going to give this a type parameter. And then I'm going to need some data constructors. In a, in a binary tree, we have some special kind of, of nodes here. We have leaf nodes, which are these nodes, the 10, the one, and the two, that are, they don't have a right child and they don't have a left child. They just have their value and that's it. So we're gonna need a constructor for a, a data constructor for that. So that's what that looks like. But we have nodes that do have a right, uh, a right child and a left child. And for that, we're going to need to define this node that says, you know, the, the, the binary tree is, uh, is recursive in its definition. If we look here, the, the, the most basic binary tree we can have is a single node, right? And that would be that would be a leaf node in a binary tree of one node. But you can also notice that each node in a binary tree that's not a leaf node has a subtree. So it has a binary tree coming off of it. And that's how we're going to define uh, this next data constructor where we have a we have a binary tree the value that we care about and we have its right subtree and notice all of these values are of the same type But this isn't all there is to the to the story because the way this is set up, we only have nodes that can have a full subtree. It, it, we only have nodes that are either a leaf node or a node that has that necessarily has a right node and a and, and, and a left node. But what happens in the case of say four here, where we only have uh, a, a subtree 
in one of those directions. Like here, we only have a subtree to the left. For that, we will need a constructor, a constructor that represents some kind of emptiness, right? And for that, we'll just call this actually. We'll just call that empty. So there we have it. We have created our binary tree. Now let's test this out in the in the REPL and see what 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 becomes of this. So we're gonna look. That file is called my binary search demo file. Everything loads. Okay. Can I create a binary tree that has a single node? So if I say, I'm just going to call this BT for shortness sake. If we have a binary tree and this is just a leaf node with the value one. Can I see that? No, I can't because here I'm not implementing some kind of interface uh, or instance that allows the, the binary tree to display the, the values that are in it. So for that, I'm going to make a binary tree derive the show type class that Haskell has. And all this does is if I want to print out the value, the values of my data structure or display it in some way, this is the type class that this, that, that my data structure would need to derive. There is another notation for, uh, for writing the functions that the function, the show function for a data structure. But here Haskell has a sensible default for how to display this. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to rely on that. So let's head back into the REPL. Let's reload and let's try and create this binary tree. And there we have it. Let's try something else. Let's say we want a node that has a value of one. And let's say that it has a leaf node as the right subtree. And to the left, it has a node that has three and a leaf node that has four, but it doesn't have a, a right subtree. And there we have it. And so we, we have our root node that has one, then it has a right subtree that's just a node with two but then it also has a left subtree that has a value of three and that node has a value of four and that's it so diagrammatically that would look something along this line along these lines so it would have two over there And over here, it would have three. And over here, it has four. That's what the binary tree that I just created in the REPL would look like. So I've made the binary tree showable. I've created 
the binary tree. I'm just going to move these up. And now we get to implement in map over a binary tree. Now, you've probably used a map function before, and the way it's set up is that it will take some function that will transform the values uh, within the data structure that you're mapping over. And then it will take the data structure that you're supposed to map over and then it'll output the new version of the data structure where the function has been applied to each element. So we've seen that with lists quite a bit where we see, say, map and we want to multiply each item by two. And then let's say want 10, right? So we want to map the multiplication of two over these values. Uh, what am I doing here? I could do this in the REPL and show it to you. So let's map times two over one to 10. And there, we multiplied everything. So essentially, if I were to map this times two function over my binary tree that I created up here, I'd end up with uh, a leaf node with eight, uh, the node going up with six and two and four, right? So we're gonna we're gonna build that function for for binary trees. And if at this point you're thinking, wow, trees and lists have something in common, then yes, you're you're onto something there because they do have quite a bit in in, in common. So let's implement tree map. All right, what does this look like? So, like we said, we're going to take a function that goes from some value, the value of what we have in our tree, to some other value. We're going to take our binary tree, and we're going to output a binary tree that has the new values. And if I want to do this, then I could say, you know, what what happens when I map a function over an empty value, right? I'm just going to get back empty. And th this, this way of programming in Haskell is known as pattern matching, right? We're... Deacons, we're, we're specifying what our arguments might look like and essentially defining a function in terms of what our arguments uh, might look like. You can think of this, if you're mathematically inclined, as us building a piecewise function. So if the tree is empty, the tree map function will just give you back empty. Right. We're not using the F. So we replace that with an underscore, which pretty just mean pretty much means I, I don't care about it. We're not using it. And let's define what that would look, what tree map looks like if I encounter a a leaf node. And this one is pretty straightforward as well. I would just create another leaf node where I call f over the value, right? So I've, I've changed the value here. And then what happens when I have f, but I match a, well, a, but I match a, a node that has a left subtree, 
that could be empty or it could be a leaf node or it could be uh, another full node uh, a value and a right subtree what happens when I have this well we defined the binary tree recur recursively it has a recursive definition right to create a binary tree you you make use of binary trees which is really cool <laughs> and we can do some recursion here on this function as well so if we have our node constructor then we can say all right i can tree map this function that i have over my left subtree i can apply the function on the value at the current node and i can also tree map that function over my right subtree and that's it that's how you define map for trees all right so let's reload this let's get back a binary tree our show is doing just fine and i want to tree map the times two function over my binary tree and we get exactly what i mentioned earlier uh in the video where we get eight six two and and four So we can move this to done. Now, structures that are mappable in, in Haskell, or really in functional programming, are, are called functors. So here, when I say make the binary tree mappable, I'm really talking about generalizing this notion of mapping over this, 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 this structure. And to do that, I'm going to do what I, I brought up earlier, where I was saying that there's a way to implement the, the behavior that that you can derive from a haskell type class so for show you can think of this as you could say a binary tree is showable and there exists some function that specifies how to display a binary tree when it is asked to be displayed for example uh, pressing enter and evaluating it in the the in, in the REPL. And so instead, since the default for for show is fine, I'm not going to implement that. We can define what it means for a, a, a binary tree to be mappable in a more general sense. So like I said before, structures that are mappable are called functors. And functor is a type class in Haskell. And the way I make this binary tree a functor is by doing this. So I create an instance. I say that it's a functor binary tree takes a value where and for functor I just need to implement the fmap function and I'll set that to tree map Hmm. 
what's the saying here? In the first argument of Frankfurt, namely binary tree A. Do I not need to specify this? Ah, I see. I don't need the type parameter. Okay. So that's that's how we do this. And what that would mean that now instead of exposing So the next thing that, that before I talk about that is so let's make this done. So in functional programming, we we don't we don't make we don't encapsulate uh, data and and the methods that act on them in classes, right? Uh, so what we do is we define data structures and we define functions that operate on those data structures, and we can organize those into modules. So since I've generalized this binary tree to be a functor, something that responds to the fmap function, I don't need to expose tree map if someone were to use this as a library or as a module or import this as a module. So what I could do is to make this file a module. And we do that by saying module and the name of my module, I'm gonna call this binary tree. And I get to list the functions that I, the functions and the data structures that I want to expose to the world. So I want to expose my binary tree data structure and for the moment that's it. And we can check this out in the REPL. First let's reload and if we do browse for binary tree that's all we get we only see the binary tree data structure that I exposed but you might be thinking wait a minute we just defined a tree map and did some other stuff what's what's going on can I still map over trees and the answer is yes, because that function fmap is broad in general, and we have access to it here uh, in the language at large as part of the language. So let's redefine our binary tree. And instead of calling tree map here, we can just say f map and there we go it just so happens that so fmap is widely available but it just so happens that the uh, don't have that the fmap for lists is the same as what map is so multiply two list one to ten this is the same. Okay. So I'm going to cut this video here. We will get to the rest of the functions to implement in another video. I'll leave the code to this in the description. If you liked this video, remember, give it a thumbs up. Talk to me in the comments about uh, about you know how you would go about implementing a binary tree or uh, some of the things that you'd like me to try and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more as well follow me on twitter and medium 
at Onel Harrison if you'd like to see my content over on those channels. Until next time, peace.